Hi, this is Tina Nisley with Keller Williams Honolulu, and this is The Life of the Land is in Its Real Estate. So I got a great show today, but first I want to go over, we all know that the real estate market is just insane right now, and we hit a record average price of a three-bedroom, two-bath, single-family home on Oahu in July was $1 million. So that's a record. It's also 10 days was the average days on the market for single family homes. And we have 1.3 months of supply right now, um, which means if no new listings come on the market in the next 1.3 months, we would have no more homes to sell. So in July, 424 homes were sold compared to in June, we sold 473. Um, I think less homes were sold because there are less available. So it, it's getting to be an issue. So if you are looking to sell, now would be a great time to get it on the market. And if you're looking to buy, just don't give up. I do have a couple of videos out there on some strategies to get your offer accepted. But right now, I want to introduce Dave Rodriguez from Approved Loans. And he is going to talk to us about credit repair, some options for some business owners, and then we're going to get into some investment opportunities. So thanks for joining us, Dave. How are you? Doing wonderful. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you. So go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, you know, what, what I do is that uh, I'm on the island of Oahu, so uh, I'm local here, hanging out uh, on the windward side where it's a little wet and windy, but, uh, you know, still loving it. Uh, like you said, I actually am with Approved Loans, and what I concentrate on is uh, credit repair, business lending, uh, SBA loans, and also real estate investment funding. So, oh, wow. All right. So, let's talk about credit repair first. We know that after the long shutdown and, and COVID it has hit everyone, and People are now just getting back to work. We're going to see some people with some, some credit issues. Um, what are some strategies? For, first of all, what do you expect to see? Well, right now, unfortunately, a lot of people did see or at least take on additional debt prior to the pandemic. So uh, a lot of people, they lost a lot of gig jobs that they were dependent on to pay these bills. Uh, so they ended up with a lot of uh, late payments, some um, um, uh, charge-offs, and these are the things that are going to, you know, be a detriment to you, if, especially if you're trying to buy a home. You know, these, these are the things that you need to clean up to be able to line yourself for that right interest rate that allows you to be, may be able to make that payment. So as we all understand, credit really is a big part of your life and affects every aspect of it just about. You know, of course, when you go to buy a home, you need to have the right credit score. Um, insurance companies are looking at your credit report to ensure that you're, you know, responsible enough to insure. And, you know, even job employers, employers are looking your, at your credit report just to make sure that, you know, again, there's a level of responsibility there that you'll bring to the job site. Wow. So what are some strategies for folks that, that may have gotten into some trouble over this last year? The first thing that needs to get done is actually pull a hard credit report, which means that you are going to the credit agencies and actually pulling a report versus getting a score, a FICO score. You may have an app on the phone, which we all do, that uh, gives you a, a rough number as to where your score is, but it doesn't give you detailed information as to what issues you may have on there. Um, again, the late payments, uh, the charge-offs, uh, 30% of people out there actually have uh, discrepancies just due to nothing more than clerical errors. So these are the nuances that will actually affect your credit score that can easily, easily be rectified. So that is something that you, you can help people with. Um, you can help them get their, their hard credit pull, help them kind of go through and and see what what's real and what's not and correct then, yes so, and in addition to that there, there are nice little tricks in the trade that you can do such as uh, trade lines which actually are a real good booster 
to be able to raise your credit score right off the bat. So, you know what, uh, there are ways of, you know, increasing your score overnight. And again, these are, this is where I come into play to be able to help you out and make that happen. So what is a trade line? The trade line is actually a means of utilizing an other, another individual's credit, uh, credit line on your credit report to be able to increase your credit score. Oh, okay. So, so I guess I always um, thought we should keep our credit separate. So my credit um, amount or, you know, what I have available isn't affecting my husband, but now you're saying it's better to maybe bring on someone else and increase the amount of credit you're eligible for to give your debt to income ratio lower. No, it's actually a matter of having different kinds of credit on your credit report, in addition to having uh, credit lines that are both old, that have high limits with low amounts on them. So again, let's say for ex an example, a credit card that somebody's had for a five-year period with, let's say, a $10,000 credit limit, but they only have $200 charged on it. That is a great booster for somebody else's credit. So again, that's what a trade line is, utilizing somebody else's credit uh, card or other credit line on your credit report to be able to boost your credit score. Great. So you can actually help people kind of reduce that debt to income ratio on paper, um, which is a big thing that lenders look at, um, which we do know based on some other um, episodes I've had with lenders that they're starting to look for, they want a lower debt to income ratio now. Um, so yeah, so that is great. So if anybody feels like um, maybe they got into some trouble, but they'd still maybe in a year or so, what is the average time to get your credit repaired? Within a six month period, we'd be able to get your credit score up from a 500 to a mid sevens, um, you know, relatively quickly. Uh, but it is a matter of really timing and also just due diligence and keeping up on it. Wow. So and maybe the market will slow down a bit in six months and there'll be more houses available just as you get your, your credit cleaned up. Uh, exactly. So uh, if anybody is interested in that, reach out to Dave. You can reach out to me. We can get you connected. Um, I think that is absolutely awesome. And I can think of some clients that could probably use your help. So you also do business. Uh, credit and um, that type of thing. So how does that work? Uh, as we all understand, uh, business owners, their first line of credit is going to be via their personal accounts. So uh, starting up a business, you are going to be utilizing your own credit to be able to begin and start your business credit lines. So of course, you have to have your credit as straight and narrow as possible and, and in line to be able to support your business. But um, then again, we can help out with, let's say, for example, equipment leases, uh, uh, startup funding. So we do work with startups. If you've got yourself a great idea, let's talk about it and let's see if we can get you the money that you need to be able to get your product or idea off the ground. Oh, wow. Okay, and then earlier you mentioned the SBA loans. Um, I guess off camera, we were talking about SBA loans. Are those still available to business owners or where, where are we with those right now? Right now, in addition to SBA lending, there's actually a lot of grants out there. So um, for example, one big one that I've been working with a good number of clients with is the IDLE loan. Actually, I'm sorry, the IDLE grant. There is both the IDLE grant and also the advance. Uh, the grant is either a $10,000 or $15,000 amount that is based on the loss of revenues between the 2019 and 2020 fiscal years. So let's say, for example, uh, somebody who's 1099, a, a uh, contractor doing, let's say, for example, Uber, a, a Uber driver, they lose 20, actually, I'm sorry, 30 or 50% of their revenues because of the virus, they may qualify for either a $10,000 or $15,000 grant, which is basically free money. You know, this is a federal uh, backed program that you have to jump on quickly because right now there's actually talk about uh, allocating half of those funds because those funds have not been claimed by the, po uh, the population yet. So they're going to be allocating these to the new infrastructure program. 
So there's currently $13 billion in there, but they're going to be allocating about $15 billion off to uh, the new projects that are going to be happening to, with, to take care of our roads and our, and our ports. So we've, you've got to move quickly on this. So you're seeing people aren't applying for them. So the money is just kind of sitting there and it's a use it or lose it situation. So you are right. And actually that's where I come in because unfortunately so many people don't understand that it's out there. Everybody hears about it on the television and radio, but they don't know where to go to get it done. And that's again, where I come in because I understand the loopholes and also the, the hurdles to get past that'll then get the, these people the approval and the monies that they need. So uh, it's just a shame that the feds make it a little difficult to, yeah. to actually be able to claim that money. But I can't really blame them because the first round, there was a lot of, you know, there, there were a lot of false claims that were paid out. They were handing money out without asking and or verifying any, any, uh, anything at all. So a lot of people took advantage of that. And it, it was just, now we're having to deal with these hurdles that are put in place by the feds to be able to ensure that the people uh, requesting the funds are actually deserving the funds. So now let's clarify who's eligible. Is it just 1099 employees? And do they have to take a loss during the last year? Or is it? Yeah. So let's, let's clarify who's eligible for those grants. Because I know there's probably a lot of people wondering, going, you know, can I qualify? So. Yes, uh, you're absolutely right. And actually, uh, the best thing to do is get in touch with me and we can go over your, your case as to what your situation is and if you had any losses. Uh, unfortunately, this is not for employed, uh, employed individuals. So if you are employed by a company, even if you may have gotten laid off, this is not the program for you. This is for people who may have a side gig or even have a business that had taken a loss. Huge one right now are restaurants. Because, of course, we all understand they were shut down for a good amount of time. Um, there is also the restaurant rejuvenation uh, program that is going to be kickstarted again because, unfortunately, there was a lot of money, again, handed out to people who did not deserve the funding. Uh, so uh, the money's out there. Get in touch so I can help you see, determine whether or not you actually qualify. Wow. Okay. So again, if you guys have questions, if you are a 1099 employee and you, you had a loss, um, give them a call and, and we can get you connected. And then you guys also, the big one that I know a lot of us want to hear about is you do loans on um, investment property. So people that want to buy the multi um, not the fix and flip, which I do a lot of, I work with a lot of, but the people that want to buy the multi-door. Um, so can we, yeah, can you share with that? How does that work? Actually, you know, real quick clarification, I do do the fix and flips also. You know, the oh. short term, yes. So you're short doing term. hard money or what, what type of loans are you doing for fix and flip? Both short term and long term uh, lending for both uh, fi fix and flips and also investment properties for either duplexes, triplexes, multiplexes. Uh, and uh, so again, multi-use also. So let's say, for example, two-story building, residence on top, res uh, retail on bottom, we can help you out with that. So uh, we do just about everything except uh, residential. Okay. So I know everybody's going to ask, with your fix and flip, are your loans strictly first position or do you have options for the gap fund loan? There are multiple options. You know, it all again depends on a, a lot of things. Part of it is that, again, we're, we're talking here in Hawaii right now. Yeah. I do work nationwide. So uh, certain states do have certain regulations and stipulations and don't allow for certain lending. But uh, again, uh, in Hawaii here, we've got quite a few options with regards to uh, providing the funding to be able to get into the property that you want to invest in. Wow. Okay. Because I do work with a lot of investors who are doing the fix and flips. So, well, let's go down the fix and flip road. So, if someone um, would like to to get into a fix and flip, what what's the process that they need to do to to get with you? Um, is there a certain loan to value? How would they get started? 
here being here in Hawaii, like you mentioned earlier, uh, the the uh, average price of a home is up there now, you know, a million dollars, which is substantial. So in terms of the dollar amounts that we can uh, fund, uh, obviously a million plus, especially dependent on the uh, number of uh, actually the type of property itself. Again, duplex, triplex. Uh, it's a base to base, uh, I'm sorry, case to case type scenario that we really look at. Uh, with regards to what's necessary from somebody who is applying, we're of course looking at uh, income and whether or not the property has renters in it already, if, if it, whether or not it's going to be a fit, fix and flip, as you mentioned, and if uh, the extent of the work that's going to be done. The amount of money that's needed for the actual renovations itself uh, versus the purchase of the property. So, you know, again, we take a bit into consideration as to, you know, with regards to the funding. So with the multiplexes, are you looking for a set return? I am. We've talked about cap rate um, on, on Hawaii. Our cap rates are not as strong as they are maybe on the mainland. So do you guys look at at the cap rates or do you make the adjustments for it being a Hawaii property? Yes, we do make the adjustments for it being in a, a Hawaii property. Uh, we understand and we have got multiple uh, lenders who understand the market in the different areas of the country. Okay. So, all right. So what, um, so with, with the fix and flips and the, um, even with the, the multi doors, uh, do you have a minimum? I know it's a hard for a lot of new investors to come in and even get started because a lot of the hard money um, lenders are looking for experience. They want them to have done two or three deals before they'll even consider loaning to them. So do you guys have that stipulation also? or Again, depends on the lender. And of course, depends on the, uh, the person who's look, looking at uh, acquiring the funding. Uh, if they have if they're strong in certain aspects and weaker in others, we'll go to one lender who will accept their the pit their docs. If not, you know what, we'll adjust and go with whoever will accept the docs to be able to get the funding in place. Okay, so I do have every once in a while I will have um, people that aren't in an LLC. It's a, it's a single person and they want to purchase a home, fix it up and then refinance it because it won't qualify for a conventional loan. So do you have lenders that will loan to people on a personal level or does it always have to be to an LLC? Oh, well, you know what? We can do on a personal level, but the terms are gonna mainly gonna be on a shorter basis, most likely a short-term uh, loan, uh, just due to the fact that again, it's gonna be with the understanding that it is a fix and flip. With regards to the refinancing, Absolutely, not a problem. And again, depending on the terms of the loan, you know, of course, we all understand there are going to be different stipulations and requirements and actually payouts for the loan itself. Again, all dependent on what the plan is for the property and uh, overall for what the owner wants to do with it. Okay, so now what about payments? I know we, we normally utilize hard money loans for um, our personal fixed and flips, and we're making the interest only payments. So is that what your lenders are expecting also? Or do you have a balloon payment at the end? Or how is that working with what you're seeing? There are a few different options. Again, like you had mentioned earlier, interest only is one option. Um, again, and all, a lot of this depends on the, the duration of the loan itself. So um, interest only, there are options with balloon payments at the end. Um, but again, it's a case-to-case -case base uh, uh, program and it all depends on the lender that we're going to be approaching with uh, the, the docs to. All right. So have you worked with a lot of people that are, where you repaired their credit and then got them into a loan for investment properties and, and that yeah. do you follow them all the way through? Yes, actually, absolutely. And, and uh, because again, they hear that we do uh, funding for investment properties, but once we look at their credit report, we understand that there's some certain issues we discuss that with them, you know, what they may have a plan set at this time, but obviously the time timeline is going to have to get altered to be able to accommodate for corrections in the credit. Um, then once their, their credit is corrected and the score is uh, qualifies them for the funding that they want, 
then they are able to go out wholeheartedly, confidently with you know, with the idea and understanding that they can get the property that they want. Wow. So did you see a lot of investing going on during during COVID and during the shutdown or were people kind of pulling back from investing? It was actually a mixed bag because even people who had uh, been doing a bit of investing, they were taking hits with regards to credit just due to the fact that they're having problems with tenants who were not paying uh, rent. And here we are now where, of course, we're talking about that, you know, at this time with regards to whether or not they're going to be evicted, they're going to be evictions happening, you know, last month or this month. But bottom line is that it's going to be happening soon here because so many landlords have not received payment for months. So that has really affected their cash flow, which in turn hurts them with regards to being able to make the payments that they need to. So uh, again, like you had said, there, a lot of these people, they had problems that they had to sacrifice somewhere. And unfortunately, their credit score did take you know, quite a beating during this time. So, so what are you seeing, or I guess, what are you predicting that these lenders are going to do with, because it, it, it was, it was a catch 22. If you owned four doors and nobody was paying rent, you couldn't make your mortgage payment. Um, so what do you predict that these lenders are going to do with these, these properties? Are they going to foreclose? Although we all know banks are not in the property management you know, business, they don't really want them back. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you predict they're going to do or what do you see them starting to do now? At this point, as far as I'm concerned, it's a real toss up. You know, right now, uh, nobody really knows what, what they're going to do. Um, they, they don't want for the owners to get kicked out and lose somebody who was good for X number of years. And, uh, but at the same time, there, there are programs out there, again, going back to the feds and their, uh, their programs to be able to help with regards to the mortgages. You know, there, there's a lot of free money out there, again, for, to be able to help people out in those situations. Most of the, the monies, though, are directed to the uh, residents of the properties and not investors. So it's, it's, uh, it's a tough situation. And what's going to happen? It's, I have really no idea. Because this happened way back when, back in 08, 09. And you know, where the crash happened, uh, the market tanked, and people ended up bailing out of homes that they couldn't afford and they couldn't have quality, should not have qualified for. So yeah. here we are in a situation that's di different where people qualified for them and they were doing well with them, but the people who they had in place, they were the ones who unfortunately defaulted on the agreement. So it's a completely different scenario as to what the, whole, the future holds. Unfortunately, I wish I wouldn't be able to know <laughs> yes. because then, you know, I, you know, we know what direction to go in. Yes, but, I, yes, me too. I wish I, I would have foreseen how crazy the market would be because those first couple of months of the shutdown, you know, people were a little apprehensive. Investors didn't really want to pick up properties because they didn't know where the market was going to go. And, and now we're all kind of kicking ourselves because, man, we should have picked up a few more. And I'm also seeing short term rentals have now just now they're bidding wars where six months ago, you people couldn't dump them fast enough. Again, I have an episode with a a short-term property manager who was like, oh, there's like 40 available in one building. And now um, we're getting beat out like crazy for my clients trying to pick up the short-term rentals. So if we'd only known, right, that, that it would yes. just take off. But yes, so is there any, um, you know, insights or recommendations you would give to people, some last parting words that, that you think that people would help people? Yes, absolutely. You know what? Um, get in line because there is money out there for you. Uh, don't hesitate. Because again, like I mentioned, the idle program itself is going to be defunded, or at least you know, part, uh, half of the money is going to be going into the roads and the infrastructure program. So get on board as quickly as you can. Um, aside from that, if you are a business owner, uh, let's talk because there are uh, grants for female women uh, disadvantaged business owners. Restaurants are getting a tremendous amount of funding. Um, if you're looking at uh, buying a home, again, these monies can you can allocate these monies into into your savings to be able to help you out. There are a lot of ways of 
utilizing the funds. Just, it's just a matter of getting on board and getting signing up the documents, signing up. All right. Well, thank you so much. So if any of this credit repair, investment um, loans, some help with some grants, if any of that sounds good to you and, and you have questions about that, please reach out to us. We can get you connected with Dave. Thank you so much for joining us. This was great information. And um, I know we'll be calling you. I um because we, we got a couple investments we're looking at. So again, anybody out there that, that needs any help with any of those things, give Dave a call, give me a call. And I will see you all in a couple of weeks. And this has been The Life of the Land is in its Real Estate. And again, I'm Keena Nisley, and thank you, Think Tech Hawaii.